Hi and welcome back to my channel. Um, as you've guessed, I'm still continuing with the astrology series, um, looking into the energies that might um, help you navigate through the month. And obviously it's the month of December we're looking at now. And this one's for, again, obviously for um, Taurus rising people. Um, now, I felt like I, um, oh, I was kind of drawn, guided to do it a little bit different where I've already pre-shuffled, but I haven't looked at the cards that have come through um, for you guys. Um, we're still using the same decks, but I was sort of feeling like with some with some of them they went, excuse me, <coughs> they went a little long and um, the video got cut off. So that kind of annoyed me. <laughs> and so I thought I, I was kind of guided to get some of these already pre-pulled pre for you guys in the hope that maybe the um, video might be a bit shorter. Um, so anyway, we... We're still going to use the same decks we've been using the last couple of months already. Um, and, but I will still shuffle the notes from the universe and the um, guardian angel messages at the end of the reading. But let's get into it and see what's come through um, for you. All right. So we have ooh, Pluto. Pluto is a strong energy. Fourth house. Fourth house is uh, Leo, yeah, because it's back. Yeah, waning givers. That's after the full moon, a few days after. Oh, waxing givers before the full moon. Put them there for context. Um, Venus. Libra, Libra's seventh house energy, but Libra's in your sixth house, isn't it? Yeah, Libra's um, sixth house. And no surprise that Libra's come through as well as Venus. Um, and then we've got last quarter. Right. Where do I put you? Okay, I think <laughs> this is a bit of a mess. Sorry, guys. It's it's Mars retro. It's kind of doing its thing, and it seems so high. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at these because there's a bit of moon activity for you. I've sort of pushed everything out of the way. Um, okay, so let's. Let's look into this. I'll read Pluto first. So Pluto's turned up and um, you might need to check where Pluto is in your chart. Um, where? Oh, I've lost. Wait a minute. It's up here somewhere. Saturn. Well, Saturn hasn't turned up. Here it is. Sorry, I'll, I'll get there. <laughs> Neptune, Pluto. Okay, in a reading, Pluto. Um, Pluto in a reading points to a big change coming your way. Whoa. It is likely an ending of some sort. We've had um, the full moon lunar eclipse, which is about endings big endings um, and that energy still lasts three to six months on either side of the eclipse and that only happened last month <clears throat> so um, then it says this will feel like a sudden event but if you look deep enough into your psyche you'll see that this was in the works for some time this death because Pluto Scorpio energy so death doesn't necessarily mean literal death, but it's a death of a thing, you know, um, or a situation. This death needs to happen to make room for new life. 
Um, the initiation of a new cycle is painful, but fighting it will just drag those feelings out. Yeah. See, if you fight, <laughs> if if you fight with the energies, it's so much more difficult. Like um, an eclipse is going to happen, and and shunt. I think that's the word for it. It 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 shocks. It it, it can shock you out of something to move you forward in the direction you're meant to move forward, so to speak, whether you're aware of it or not. And being more aware of it is more helpful. To, it's more helpful to know even if it might seem a bit difficult because that way you're not having the carpet pulled from under you kind of thing because you already know, hey, the energies are here, something big's going to be happening, you've got your moon phases i'll look into that in a minute um which i think you should take notice of so we've got venus but i'm not sure if venus will be um significant um or if it's just simply libra energy fourth house what was fourth house again no that wasn't libra that was um leo okay Venus could be in your fourth house or in Libra for you, in your sixth. Okay, oh, sorry, I'm on a tangent. Um, if you've been waiting for a big ending or some type of monumental change to take place, know that it will be arriving shortly. Sometimes the anticipation of knowing that something out of your control is about to happen is almost worse than the actual event. Freedom from old structures and anxiety is a relief and it is in that moment that you can begin to rebuild. Wow. Well, check where your Pluto is placed. Because um, so far we've got fourth house, which is Leo for you. Um, is your Pluto in the Leo sign? Hmm. Or is it in Libra? Okay, well, we'll <laughs> many questions and not so many answers. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll look at Venus and then we'll move into the um, moon phases because the, the house is, uh, fourth house is usually, um, the fourth house is home, family, can see an energy even if it's not in the Cancian sign for you. Fourth house for you is in Leo. Um, we'll see what other cards have come through. I don't know yet. <laughs> so I'll read Venus. Um, it is time to appreciate the beauty in your surroundings. Too often we rush through life, never stopping to appreciate the simple things. Food and shelter are human needs, but we also need enjoyment. Fifth house, Leo. Yeah, which is in your fourth house um, of home and family. Um, enjoyment. We need pleasure and intimacy. We need laughter and we need rest. Without these, we are just empty shells prone to depression and loneliness. Venus serves as a... Um, Venus, sorry. Venus serves as a reminder to pamper yourself every now and then you'll be more productive in the long run yeah um, you could be going through a period of attraction right now whether you are attracting material items or romantic interests venus wants you to not only enjoy it but to utilize it how can you use this magical energy you are re radiating to serve yourself so often we are told not to be selfish or to put our needs first, but in fact, you must. When you are happy, the people around you are happier as well. Now, Libra is not in your seventh house. It is in... Libra's in your sixth house. So it, that kind of ties in, in my view, that ties in um, because sixth house energy is Virgo energy and it's about health, and um, health and service and all that sort of thing, but it's your own health as well. And 
often we we look past our mental health, you know, our mental emotional health as well, because we're busy trying to please everyone else, which is a libra thing to do. Um, yeah, I, I think this one's about giving yourself some self care and allowing yourself to enjoy things. Something's going to be coming. Um, but knowing it's going to happen and being aware of it, being ready for it, um, is, is going to serve you. I've lost it. Where is it? Oh, here we go. We have, which one was first? Waxing Gibbous. Yeah, last quarter. Yeah, that's not the first quarter. That's last quarter after the, after the full moon. So this one's about... Um, you see, waxing gibbous is heading to the full moon. Then you've got the, the full moon. Then you've got, um, no, I've put them around the wrong way, I think. Yeah, I think I've done that the wrong way. Yeah, because they were that way anyway when they came through. Um, this is a few days before the full moon. This is a few days after, and this is a week after, around about, I think. And this one is about um, what do you need to release kind of thing. Like if you haven't already done your release work, again, if you do um, if you do moon work, like release work, a uh, full moon and put your wishes and um, um, goals out in the um, new moon. So this one's, the, this one's a reminder that if you feel you, didn't fully get to use the energies of the full moon that you've got another chance that way with the last quarter um <laughs> anyway we're back to this <laughs> sorry um the waxing gibbous moon is all about tending to the finer details of a situation the flowers are blooming but they still require your attention enjoy the beauty but beauty venus libra enjoy the beauty um, but be sure to check in frequently or your garden could get infested with mites. If you have dropped the ball recently, this card is a gentle reminder that you still have a chance to pick up where you left off. Yeah, you get another chance. Um, I know it's this one we're reading, but yeah. Um, pick up where you left off. Trying to cheat or or cut corners may work in the moment but these shortcuts are always discovered later on you don't want to be doing that okay so then we do waning gibbous so waxing is when it's yeah it's kind of like that um what's the karate show wax on wax off waxing means it's going towards the full moon waning means it's moving away from and then you've got your last quarter which is you know coming from the full moon moving towards the next new moon um okay so waning gibbous as the moon begins to get smaller you may feel an urge to share recently acquired knowledge with your community we haven't got any 11th house yet um or aquarius uh, reflection doesn't always have to be a solitary act communication about your feelings can help prepare you for the upcoming stages Look at it this way. If someone else's information could help you, wouldn't you want them to share it? You could also be feeling out of the loop or shunned by your community. Okay, we'll see what else comes through. But where, where's your Aquarius? I don't, yeah, no, it's not. We'll see if it's come through with the other cards. Um, being ostracized hurts and you should share how you feel with those around you. This behaviour could be unintentional, so don't write anyone off yet. Yeah, see, with Mars retrograde, I mean, it's true. I mean, it's easy to jump to um, angry feelings, angry hurt feelings first. But if we already are aware of the um, Mars retrograde and everything not moving as fast as we want, not moving forward in the way we want, um, even with communication, although it's not Mercury retrograde, with things already frustrating us, our communication might be a bit skew if as well. And this is for any sign, not just you guys. Um, 
it's for all of us you know mars retro is going to be here for a bit <laughs> and as i've said i um go with the pre-shadow then the actual retrograde then the post-shadow time frame afterwards as well so that's why i say it's at least till february next year where a lot of other astrologers will say oh it's until january but they're not including the um the pre and post shadow phases which is it explains a lot when you know that that's um what is happening because a lot of the time if you if you make a note of it, it a lot of the time if people are going oh there's no retrograde happening or blah 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 but if you go if you kind of realize hey it's either pre-shadow or post-shadow it's still in that phase it makes more sense because you go well it hasn't actually finished or completely started yet well, either way it's having the effects on either side um so being aware of it you know helps um last quarter moon sorry i'm on i'm going on tangents <laughs> um the flower petals begin to wilt and fall and you may be feeling anxious about letting go, full moon letting go, of their beauty. Beauty, Venus. It is important to remember that they are just getting out of the way so, uh, so the seeds can be spread by the wind. Like the flower, you also need to release what is blocking your potential. Be sure to make note of what did work for you and oh be sure to make be sure to make a note of what did work for you and apply that to the situation next time right um we did we did already read venus didn't we yeah because i did the planets first um yeah okay make uh, take a note of where venus and pluto are in your chart so the thing is with the same as with Saturn. Saturn and Pluto are um, known as malefics. Of there's benefics and malefics. Um, in other words, Saturn and Pluto get a bad rap because um, they're seen as negative. And even though it might have sounded a bit negative that something big's going to happen and it's probably going to be an ending, it's moving things around so that your beginnings can be enjoyed, that you can have the enjoyment of Venus um, in, in, in the future, well, with the next new moon. Um, if, you, if you're already aware of it ahead of time. And the same with Saturn. Saturn is about um, structure, going slow, being methodical, similar to Virgo, um, it's more about career, though, where Virgo is more about being of service to others and health. Um, but that's also Virgo and 10th um, house. Well, the 10th and the 6th house is always where they where you look to see your um, career vocation, for instance. Anyway, on another tangent. <laughs> so let's see what have we got. Oh, Saturn. Boom. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, you've got Saturn and Pluto. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. The part of you that accepts challenge to gain wisdom. Yeah, that's kind of what, what I've been trying to say. I don't know if I'm making any sense or just sort of babbling on, but that's my hope that I'm making sense. But, yeah, uh, it's, I'm not surprised that Saturn's rocked up because Pluto was there, but, I mean... It's not necessarily Pluto is about the Phoenix rising so it's not again like I said you don't you don't need to fear these energies these energies can help you to be more methodical because with Mars retro it's forcing all of us no matter what what our sign is it's forcing all of us to be more um, methodical um, and slow down a bit and not scream forward you know um and not make mistakes because a lot of the time moving forward too fast we can make mistakes and then you know 
it's better to correct ourselves before any mistakes so that they don't happen in the first place instead of trying to correct a mistake, if that makes sense. Um, Gemini, communication. Gemini is in your, well, Taurus is your first house, so Gemini is your second house, so we're talking money and self-worth. Um, how you communicate with money. Hmm. Um, the energy is communicative, mischievous, lively, witty and informative, stimulating. Exchange is possible. How you communicate with money um, and self-worth. Okay, let's see what else there is. Sixth house, I talked about, um, I spoke about Virgo, sixth house en energy, but Virgo's not in your sixth house, I think. Is that Libra? Wait, is Libra in your sixth house? Boom, yeah. Oh, I keep forgetting to read them. I'm <laughs> sorry. The work, health and duty area of your life, like I said, the service to others, health, work, duty. Third house. Well, third house is Gemini energy, but again, third house is not Gemini for you. It's, um, oh, wow, it's, it's cancer. Cancer energy. Yeah. Which is normally fourth house. Um, but not for you guys because you're Taurus rising. Um, so the third house. Your potential to learn something and your local neighbourhood. Ah, hang on. Um, right, third house is in Cancer. Might have a lot to do or something to do with your family. Um, siblings, cousins, neighbourhood, neighbours. Hmm. We'll see what else comes through. <laughs> Virgo. Ah! Virgo's your seventh house, isn't it? No, got it wrong. Virgo's not, because Virgo's before Libra. Sixth, fifth, fifth. Oh, you've got a bit of activity going on here with some houses. Ascendant, Taurus rising. Out, oh, look, the alchemist. Yeah, oh, Aquarius. Didn't we get some Aquarius energy? Didn't that come through or something? Or did I just talk about it? Um, communication and, and um, community, I think, was something to do with it. The innovator. Aquarius is 11th house energy. You do not have 11th house here, but Aquarius is not in your 11th house. It's in it's in your 10th house, which is ruled by Saturn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, but Capricorn's not your 10th house. Aquarius is. Okay, hopefully I'm making sense. First house, well, we know <laughs> it's your rising sign. So you've got a bit here, first, fourth, uh, third, sixth, yeah. First, third, fourth, sixth house. Um, I think that's it. So we'll move on to, the. you've got Aries upright. Aries is your 12th house, isn't it? I think so. Well, it's good that it's upright because with Mars Retro, I wouldn't have been surprised if it would have been in reverse, but it wasn't. Pluto again, something's, yeah, you, yeah, something's happening for you guys. Progressions. That's about looking forward, I think. And Uranus, quirkiness, wanting to break free. Aquarius energy, Uranus rules Aquarius. I'll wait to look up until I look up these before I move on to those. So we've got first house. 
well, not first house, Aries. Well, first, her first house was right next to it, but Aries is in your 12th house, um, which, again, is Neptunian, Piscean energy um, and themes. But, yeah, so Aries, we've got, we read the gift because it's upright. And it says, uh, can you see it over here? I don't know. Okay. Aries marks the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere, hemisphere after a long dark winter. Um, the dead landscape comes alive. Plants that were sh uh, yep, shorn of leaves or dormant now breathe new life. This is a brave miracle and it can be your miracle. Feel the flowing inner life force. Trust this divine direction and summon the courage to begin. So even, yeah, as I've said already, um, we can't, it's the same as with uh, Mercury retrograde. We, we, it's not possible to spend weeks and weeks and weeks hiding ourselves away in some cave until the retrograde's finished. It's just not possible for any of us. We know that. Um, but with M Mars retro, knowing that things have to move steadily and slowly and methodically, you know, um, 10th house, Capricorn, Saturn, Virgo, um, Mercury, it rules Virgo. Um, but, yeah, you've got it upright, so it's it's not going to need to be difficult. And the change, even though it says there's going to be big change, again, it doesn't have to be difficult if you already know the energies are there and something's going to something's going to be changing it's not going to you know pull the carpet from the rug from under you kind of thing in that sense um like i really hope i'm making sense <laughs> okay so we've got pluto and again this one's upright so this one's saying spiritual gift yeah um, Pluto, because uh, it's Pluto's the phoenix rising. That's the energy of it. So it's sort of getting rid of, getting rid of what we don't want, what didn't work for us, what is holding us back. Even maybe there's something there, maybe for you that way. Um, re release what hasn't worked, what's holding us back, because Pluto, the there's there's a good side of Pluto is the phoenix rising something wonderful wants to come through and it's time to let that happen um okay so Pluto asks you in the face of life and death why are you here this isn't a rhetorical question strip down to the essentials and come back to what really matters to find the answer yeah what matters can see an energy isn't isn't the third house your um in cancer for you gemini cancer energy yeah because they're right next to each other fourth house because fourth house is cancer but it's in gemini isn't that right no no wait taurus rising gemini's second house Cancer is third house. Yeah, I've got cancer, so I got confused. Leo's fourth house. Okay. But, yeah, what's important to you? I think it's got to do with family. Um, like I was saying, it could be cousins, um, siblings. It could be neighbours. Um, depends what sort of relationship you have with your neighbours. Um Okay, so 56, I mean, some people can have really good um, relationships with their neighbours. I'm lucky that I do. I'm very lucky that I've got some really good neighbours myself. But, yeah, um, progressions, journey. But we've got this one in the challenge position, so let's read up on the challenge. This is not a small obstacle or opportunity. 
This is part of a complex pattern. Every choice you make changes how it unfolds. Wow. Mm. Because you can move forward, but be very aware that there is some, well, when I say be very, I don't want you to sort of be afraid or worried because this, the energies are here to help us, you know. This is, if, if we're on, on, the, on the wrong trail, um, if we're, if we've sort of been going in the wrong direction, um, well, last month we had the eclipse. So the energies are still going to be around, and we even even with the um, full moons that won't be the eclipse, obviously, because it was last month, and they'll be in a different sign. We can still tap into the eclipse energies at full moon and release because it's going to have that much more power. Um, because it's still, we're still in the eclipse season. It's three to six months either side. And you've got big changes on the way that you don't need to fear these changes. Um, Pluto's come through twice, it's, so it's, it's a big deal. Something's happening. Um, Virgo health. Libra sixth house health health relationships again like I was saying perhaps some um, siblings cousins neighbors okay let's let's look at Uranus change that's upright so that's good we got that as twenty five okay I don't know if you can see it if it's in the camera focus or not. Okay, Uranus change. Gift, prepare for an evolutionary leap. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because Pluto, you're going to be the phoenix rising. Look at the, this is how you're going to be, with this woman, male or female. Reach for the stars because I think this is about to happen for you. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, prepare for an evolutionary leap. Shocking circumstances. Pluto, the the um, last month's um, eclipse, Mars retro. Well, you'll be able to work with Mars retro because, look, this is upright. So taking the energies of Saturn to sort of be slow and methodical and you'll get exactly where you need to be and then there won't be any... Um, difficulties because like there's not in any um aspects like a square or an opposition you've got nothing like that in here this is big but it doesn't have to be feared you can you can move through this and in in your own way you know you can um look forward to it i i just feel it's that kind of energy that it's that's how you're going to feel no matter what gender you're going to be you know, reaching for the stars because, you know, that I keep looking at that that woman in the card right now. That that I feel is how you're going to feel this December. Um, sorry, I go on a tangent all the time. Shocking circumstances can force you to engage gifts you didn't know you had. And help you transform, which is Phoenix rising, transforming out of the difficulty, out of because Pluto get removes the difficulty. Pluto um, brings out the difficulty for you to deal with. Full moon release work, so you can clear the way for the next new moon and transformation. You are having a wow. <laughs> Um, you're having a big transformation of some sort um, and gifts yeah engage gifts you didn't know you had and help you transform you are not those external attributes in transformation you will not dissolve 
A caterpillar is still internally the same creature once it became, becomes a butterfly. Reach for the stars. You, you're about to become a, the butterfly you've wanted to be. Big month for you guys. Wow. Intuition. Boom. Wow. Yeah. I'm just sorry. I'm just, just blown away by this. Personal growth. Ah. Uh, what can I say? Seven. Uh, that's my favorite number. Seven's a lucky number. 22. That's the um, master number of service, which is Virgo. Service duty. But again, didn't it say somewhere about, or did I say it, being of service to yourself? Because no one else is living your life. No one else gets to tell you what to do. You, you get to get in the driver's seat and make the change and be the phoenix rising. I don't want to cover that woman because I feel like... Um, like I said, no matter what your gender is, look, she's reaching up to personal growth. Boom. That's you. No matter what your gender. Rebirth. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I, I, I am a little speechless. This is just... Don't fear this change. This is like you, uh, you're going to feel like that. You are going to love the person you are going to be reborn as. And your intuition is going to be strong. Let's have a look what um, notes from the universe on abundance. What abundance messages does the universe want you to know? That one looked like it wanted to come out. Okay. Do you know what's a million times better than getting to the top of the mountain? Getting there after having been lost. And perhaps you were feeling lost, you know? Um, but yeah, Pluto's going to work in your favor. And look, like I said, you, you don't have that in reverse. That's really good. Um, and then it says, oh yeah, the universe. I, yeah, I, I actually want to keep not her, uh, not covering her. Not, it's not about gender. It's about how, how you will feel, um, in December. You know, there's a big change. This is your this is your time, my friend. This is your time. Is there any other messages from the universe about abundance for the Taurus rises? I mean, you can look at where Saturn is in your chart and Venus. But it seems that um, Pluto's the the um, the heavy hitter, so to speak for December in a good way, you know. I mean, personal growth and rebirth, intuition. Wow. Is there any other messages for the Taurus Rising people for December 2022 for them? What do they need to know? What does the universe want them to know? Is there anything else? Messages of abundance. Okay. Yeah, I um wonder maybe that's it. I'll give it one more shuffle and see. Because that's yeah, you might have been feeling lost. That I just keep coming back to okay, there is one more. Yeah, you might have been feeling lost, but that's going to change. That's like you you have big things happening in December. Yeah, Phoenix rising. 
and I think these are, aren't these lucky blossom what are they called again um oh gosh I can't remember what their what their name is but I'm pretty sure that the Chinese is it that they the, the, oh what are they called the blossoms the um but they're apparently lucky <laughs> um So much more awaits you. Boom. <laughs> yeah. There'll come a day when you look back where you've been and where you are and call these your warm-up years. More love, more fun, more friends, more laughter, more thoughts, more things, more, more, lots, more, more. You're so cute, the universe. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm just, uh, it's going to be a powerful month for you guys. Do not fear the change. Walk into it with your arms, arms wide open. This is, <laughs> this is your, um, this is your time. This is your time. It's time for you to rise. I, I don't know what else to say. You've, you've got a lot of personal growth coming through. Phoenix rising from the ashes. Wow. No more hiding. No more. No more fearing. You do not need to fear this change. This change is here for good, for your to benefit you. Whatever this change is, it's going to be amazing. Okay, is there any other guardian angel messages? Or are we done with it? I think we're done with it. Let's have a look what came through. Oh, I don't know what came through first. I think this one came through first. Let's have a look. Patience. Or Virgo, having to be positive change, compassion. Okay, we'll go with compassion first. Dearest one, be compassionate towards yourself. I knew I knew, needed to do this one first. Be compassionate towards yourself. It's not selfish to put yourself first and look after your own health, mental, emotional health physical health um yeah be compassionate towards yourself surrender the self-criticism which is a virgo thing virgo 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 is in your what uh fifth house is it or is... Uh, i think it is um surrender the self-criticism and fear fear nothing to fear um uh, that has you believing you need to improve in order to be worthy. You are worthy. The universe has said you're worthy. Um, you are perfect just as you are. The only thing that needs to change is your perception. You will come to realize the jewel you are when you love and honor yourself as you are. Patience, Virgo thing, well, it's more Saturn, um, 10th house, Saturn, um, Capricorn energy. Capricorn, where's Capricorn for you? It's, um, is that your 11th house? No, your 9th, I think. Yeah, well, 9th house didn't come through, but yeah. Um, patience. Because Mars retro, we need it. No, excuse me. Patience is required at the moment. You may feel that things are not moving as fast, Mars retrograde, as you would like. Yet there is a lot going on energetically. The current situation causing concern, so something's causing concern, um, is evolving positively. Phoenix rising, big changes. Um, let go and have patience. You will eventually realize that this whole event was in fact a blessing. 
all is perfect as it is. Trust, you are eternally loved and guided. I'm going to move these like this way because I, I just feel I need to keep that in your focus. Um, and look, I want to end on this positive change. Dare to be different when you are criticised. There we go. Um, remember that you will never please everyone. Many brilliant and gifted individuals were not fully appreciated or understood in their own lifetime. Yet it is, it is often they who have sown the seeds of change. Don't be worried. Don't be worried about anything. You've got nothing to fear. Change is on the way and it's going to be good change. Personal growth, rebirth intuition is going to be working for you um yeah uranus and aquarius came through that's not your 11th house what did we say that was ninth was it or 10th 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 saturn energy so 10th house is career so it's to do with your career as well it could be something to do with your career but there was also um, siblings, cousins, neighbours. Hmm. We'll see what. Hopefully, that make this makes sense to you. But something something big is on the horizon, and you don't need to fear it because this is where you're going to be ending up. No matter what your gender, you're going to be. The phoenix rising, reaching for the stars because you're going to be able to grab them. Stars. Yeah. The, the sky's the limit. I mean, that's not even the sky is not, not, you're not even limited that way. Embrace the change like she is. Um, hopefully this has helped you guys. Um. And, yeah, I'll speak to you next time. Bye for now.